everyone it's Rachel again from Twinkle here with another nature workshop now remember we use the exploring nature with children curriculum as our foundation to guide our weekly themes but we kind of take it into a little bit of a different direction by doing this in three parts we're going to have a part where we communicate with each other and get our brain thinking a little bit we're gonna have a part where we connect with nature more on an um, emotional level and our third thing is we get creative this week is a bee week honey bee week to be specific and there are a lot of things to get stuck into for bee week my family's been busy bees sorry all week um, so hopefully you'll get to extend this topic out as much as you want to for your family so when I started thinking about bees the first thing I thought of is the reaction that I see some people do when they see bees. Maybe a little bit like this. Is that you? Do you do that? I sometimes want to do that but I've learned to stand still. People do that because they're scared of bees which can seem a little bit of an illogical fear. Illogical means that it doesn't seem to make sense. However, there might be a reason someone has what you think is an illogical fear that is actually logical, that makes sense to them. Let me tell you a story that has nothing to do with bees that maybe explains that. So when I was little, I used to have really long hair, so long that I could sit on it and I used to love having it down. I wasn't usually allowed to wear it down for school, but when I was at home, I would lay about with it all flowing around, feeling very, very fancy. And one time when my mum was upstairs with a bad back, um, lying in bed, my brothers decided to do some vacuuming to clean up the house. You can probably see where this is going. They vacuumed along the floor where I was laying on the sofa with my hair draped down. And yep, they vacuumed up my hair. And worse than that, instead of turning it off, they carried me up the stairs with the vacuum cleaner still plugged in so it was going and eating up my hair more and more and it could smell the burning hair. It was horrendous. I had to have about this much cut off my hair. And from that time on, I had a fear of vacuum cleaners, even as an adult. I was okay using it, but if one came near to me, I would be very, very scared. Now, for most people, that seems completely illogical for them to be scared of vacuum cleaners. But for me, that was a little bit of a logical experience because of the illogical fear because of the experience that I'd had. So when we think about fears, we can't laugh at someone else's fears and think, why on earth are you scared of bees? Because we don't know what they've experienced and we don't know how their brain is working to cause that fear. Okay, and everyone's brain works in a very different way. So when we're talking today and having our discussion, some of the questions are going to be about that, about logical and illogical fears. And are there really any illogical fears? Is it okay to be scared of bees? What should we do when we come across bees? So we're gonna talk about that together. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the problem of bees declining and I'm sure you've heard a lot about in that in the news so if you want to discuss that I have put an article below that you can read and find out more together but I'm going to go ahead and show you the questions that you can discuss today question one is there anything that you are scared of in nature why is it illogical or a logical fear question number two so I do keep bees Question number two, should we keep bees? What do you think, Amelia? No. Okay. Because they will sting you. Maybe. <laughs> Imagine you're a farmer. Your whole livelihood, being able to support yourself and your family, depends on how many crops you can produce each year. If you use pesticides, that means you're going to be more successful, you're going to grow more crops more reliably. Then you find out what pesticides do to the bee population. What are you going to do? Should you continue? Who do you put first, the bees or your family's immediate needs? Have a think and let me know what you discussed. Right, here are the three questions. So in a moment, pause the video, pick a question and decide which one you're going to discuss as a family. If you want, you can just do it quickly over a snack and just dive straight into your opinions. 
or you can take some time to go away from each other, prepare what you're going to say and then come back with your point of view. Whichever way you do though, don't forget that causal connective because so that you can give some reasons as to why you think what you think. I hope you had some great discussion with your family and not too many arguments. It is quite easy to get heated over these issues so I wouldn't be surprised if some of them did end up being a little bit heated. Now. We're about to do our connecting, which means we're going to connect with nature, thinking about our emotions, our feelings. You do not have to do one massive hike in the mountains for your nature walk. We live in the middle of a city, it's very busy, that's why sometimes you might hear the ice cream van I can hear now, or ambulance going, going past. So we just like to do our nature exploration all through the week, whenever we're outside. It could be walking to the bus, it could be when you're out in the woods, anytime you want. If you can't get out, then you could easily do this activity while watching a nature documentary or even reading a non-fiction book about bees. You should still be able to do some of these activities, or maybe even all of them, because we're going to have another 3, 2, 1 challenge. Don't worry if you weren't here last week and you don't know what that is, I'm going to explain. All I want you to do is notice three things that make you feel calm when you're out in nature or when you're exploring nature inside. Then I want you to think about two things that make you feel nervous. Disclaimer, this is not a chance. I know what some of you are thinking. This is not a chance for you to make your grown-ups nervous by deciding to do something dangerous or that they don't want you to do. So no gymnastics up in the trees, please. So two things that make you feel nervous. And the last thing, last week we had something that made you laugh and made you smile. This week I want you to do something that makes somebody else smile. So three things that make you feel calm, two things that make you feel nervous, and one thing to make somebody else smile. I'm going to show you what my family did on our explorations, and then it's your chance to pause the video and go off and do it. Three, two, one, let's go! Oh, whoa, that is such a big one! <laughs> That's bigger than any of the others. Isn't it a bit camouflaged, don't you think? Welcome back. We've had some time communicating. We've connected. Now it's time to create. One thing I promised that I wouldn't do when it came to these workshops is that I wouldn't create a step-by-step -step list of instructions for crafts for you to follow because that's not what creating is about. Sometimes it's nice to do that and that's fine, but for this workshop I want you to use your own skills and ideas and inspirations to create a project that is entirely yours. So all I'm going to do is show you what I got up to. You can use those ideas or you can create your own. So the first thing we did is we created some laptop, lap, not laptops, that's wrong, some lap books. <laughs> and we um, printed out the free lap books to help us and put in activities and games and all sorts of things. I even made my own book of information that we could use and you'll see a recipe coming up for honey biscuits. We've still got to do that but we're looking forward to making some of those. My favourite project was making this mobile. So I printed off the PowerPoint actually and used the PowerPoint to have, add the information to my mobile about the bee's life cycle. You can write your own information, you can put just pictures if you want to, you can add pine cones and feathers and make it really attractive, but um, I really enjoy doing the mobile. We also, as you can see, practice doing the waggle dance. Now, you might be a little bit better than us and want to invent and choreograph your own entire waggle dance to communicate with each other about where the best nectar is. Another thing that we tried doing is we tried weaving some bees. So we used recycled bits and bobs that we had lying around the house. We cut out a shape of cardboard, cut some little lines around to help us weave the stripes of our bees and then just had a go at using what we had to make a bee. Whatever you decide to do, have lots of fun creating. 
It's about making something that reminds you of these, either what you've learned or something that you're inspired about. And it's about making something that is uniquely you. I would love to see what you got up to in the Facebook group, so please do that. And I will see you next week. Have fun exploring.